Welcome back. Um, we're talking about fuel consumption dropping by 18.5 billion liters after deregulation. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. The experts will tell us that. And we do not know uh, how that has impacted, whether positively or negatively, on the people. But, for, but by the way, how does the, uh, the group that plays around that sector uh, take it? So we are having the privilege this morning of being joined by Ipman National Public Relations Officer, Ipman that is Independent Petroleum Marketers Association of Nigeria, in the person of Chief Ukadike Chinedu. Uh, Chief Chinedu, welcome to the program. Yeah, my brother, how are you? I'm fine this morning. Uh, if you can speak up a little bit louder. Um, so that we can hear you. And uh, we cannot see you now. Please put on your video. OK, now, uh, we are being told that after deregulation, uh, the monthly consumption has dropped by 18.5 million. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Please let us know what you think is happening here. Are Nigerians better for it, or are we worse for it? The 18.5 million that, has re that it has reduced by, is that a good number or a bad number? Please let us know. Well, the, uh, the statistics uh, you have is uh, from uh, NMPC, NMPC, uh, limited NMPC DR, CCR, and that statistics uh, you have um, was articulated by them because you know Nigeria is heavily dependent on the importation of petroleum products from uh, foreign countries. And uh, since the removal of uh, world subsidy, I also believe that uh, they will have uh, toned down the volume of importation of petroleum products into this country. And with that, uh, since uh, there is no scarcity and the steady supply of petroleum products all over the nation, they will be able to articulate the quantity of petroleum products they have uh, imported into this country. And uh, you will also understand the factors uh, that will expect uh, the reduction of consumption of uh, uh, fuel in Nigeria. One is that the domestic consumption of fuel has been restricted because of the high cost of price of petroleum products. And uh, another one is uh, the export, exportation of petroleum products that was imported into this country, smuggled out of this country to a uh, neighboring country. The other one is uh, the invention of uh, using uh, RPG and CNG. RPG in terms of uh, conversion of some generators, because you know that petroleum product, premium motor spirit, PMA, drives uh, SMC in this country because of the failure in the in power uh, sector. So you all, all understand with me uh, that even the little family uh, salon man, entirely everybody, including your studio, sometimes depend on fuel uh, generators to be able to run their, their uh, commercial activity. Uh, that is not only the, 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 the uh, also uh, uh, factors. Factors is that uh, the price of the petroleum product has also shaded and tailored the consumption uh, of motor, the consumption of uh, Nigeria or motorists in terms of unnecessary traveling and also considering the essence of traveling, I mean, the pulling resources together to be able to travel in one vehicle. So some of all these things, uh, trying to be very, very careful, not being extravagant, have also uh, ensured that petroleum product imported in this country has been tailored. And uh, that is why you are getting such figures. Unlike the Bulgarian figure, which was necessitated by uh, 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 exploitation, of uh, small glass and those that are profiteering and sending this petroleum product across the border. Okay, well, it gives me an idea, a layman, that 18, reducing by 18.5 million uh, just shows that these are people 
who ordinarily could have used it but are not able to, which means their life is now worse than it used to be. Do you look at it from that perspective as well? Well, I don't look at it from that perspective because I don't look at it from that perspective because I also want you to understand that immediately the removal of such soldiers was announced by Mr. President during his inauguration. You also have to uh, understand that it's also a ripple effect by commuters in neighboring countries and those who smile to the bank with the importation of petroleum products into Nigeria and smuggling into the other countries. Or an abortion. People are there agitating uh, that Nigeria should return back to the non subsidy uh, regime era. So now that this is, it has affected adversely on people who are gaining from this ill, uh, Ill sector, it is also important that we Nigeria should also start to uh, look at ourselves. I'm able to find out where our problem is coming from and where we are going. We cannot be able to continue to be able to propagate this illicit uh, uh, exportation of petroleum products to the non country. And the country is suffering. And the full Nigerians like me and you are dying. And the amenities and infrastructure are decaying because of lack of funding. So I'm not saying it in that way. I'm saying it in a very, very positive way, so that it will also be able to be able to concern us, so that we will not actually want to run with the economy. Because you also like have said this before in one of your interviews, that a renowned economist has advised Nigeria, Konji One, has advised Nigeria that if we don't deal with the issue of the war of social policy and go to total and remove the regulation in our economy, that is to cripple the Nigerian economy with those the no type. creative ways because this one just is like for me I, I don't know about you but it's for me it's like uh, you have your child in a boarding school and you're you're buying provisions for them but for the fact that you know that senior students will come and take part of that uh, those provisions you stop buying the provisions for him so that the senior students will not have access to the provisions uh, again so are you not doing your child a disservice by doing that uh, or, or can't you find other ways in which you can still give your, your child those provisions and not have the senior students come and bully him and take those provisions away from him? That's how I am seeing it, that because you want to beautify the, the face, you first of all pull out the nose. It's, that's what my people say. So is, are we not suffering more than we are gaining just because uh, we found out that some unscrupulous elements, not even unscrupulous elements, they are businessmen. Just like you have a filling station in Nigeria, some people might just decide that the fuel they get, they are going to take it to another country because it will pay them more. So are we not suffering more than we are gaining from whatever is happening now? 18.5 million liters short because of deregulation. Okay. Even then, it, let's leave, remove us from the picture. How has Ipman gained from this deregulation now at this moment? Okay. Um, uh, for your narrative uh, about the child, your child in the boarding school, uh, that you're buying provisions for. And uh, some senior students are also enjoying those provisions you bought for your child. And when you go to your school and you find out that your child is suffering for shock, I have spent a lot of money if you put it that way. Uh, buying provisions. And the child is not even taking any part of these provisions. Instead of the child drinking their milk and uh, the geisha and other stuff there, they will confine the child to smoking gas and eating the carbon biscuit. And the child is malnutrited. Uh, man don't you think you have to find a way to be able to ensure uh, that you don't give that senior student uh, an opportunity to continue to exploit your child, either by, first of all, stopping uh, sending those uh, provisions to your child, 
But so your child will also case, understand that case, if the child is hungry, he doesn't get that provision, that he should be able to say, guide it, not allow him to so come and uh, uh, thank you because the provisions are in surplus. I think we are importing more than we can consume. If 18.7 million liters have been saved, it has saved this country a lot of money. And that kind of money can be used to be able to empower and improve on public health, on health, infrastructure, and also increase the salary. Because we know that uh, the salaries are not being increased, people are talking about something. It is some of some that we talk about the palliative and other resources. So now that the government is trying as much as possible to be able to recruit some of this funding, excessive funding. That are that are this midwife and stop from uh, from anybody from even unnecessary uh, or the inflation of some of these volumes by those that are uh, important in the production of I I feel that, that there is a policy measure at any particular point in time whereby government will come and very very strong and they will take some decisions drastic decisions that will affect those who are directly uh, their responsibility and those who are secondary uh, responsibility. So that if by the time the secondary leaves, they can be able to discuss and be able to look at how they can be able to take care of the family. Now, for the independent marketers, it is not good for us. The business are also so low. Uh, people who are used to, used to buy a petroleum uh, product and feed their tires and have like convoys or vehicles and I do motor case, they are no longer uh, doing, doing that kind of show. You go to the filling station, our test has dropped drastically. Those who normally buy food tank, no longer buy food tank anymore. They buy processing products and they can be able to use and be able to consume. No unnecessary movement. Those that are driving bikes, who normally used to buy 10 liters, 5 liters, most of them buy three, two liters, and they would exercise themselves and complete the other side, rule on the other one, either by striking or they are using their phone, not coming to your hand. Somebody can now just wake up this morning and say, it's very safe, maybe feed his side, I don't know, maybe feed his without being sure of what it's going, what it's going to do. So this also has also seen us economically. So that we say this are not part of our uh, economic case, I'm telling you too. For all the independent motor cars, it's not really sound for us. Business is no longer moving. Sometimes most of our physicians sell one full truck a day. But now it takes two weeks for you to be able to sell one truck. Nobody is coming to buy. Even those that use the to sleep sometimes have now decided to put mosquito nets and open their windows <laughs> and they still sleep. Mm. So it is important that at the uh, particular point, we will start adjusting our efforts. Because everything is in surplus. The fuel is there, we are still uh, uh, buying it, not only that we are importing it. But, uh, we, we still still have our refinery, nobody is talking about the repurposing of our refinery, nobody is talking about the modular refinery, nobody is talking about using LA, uh, uh, CNG, nobody is talking about using uh, LPG to power the area. Now, to give you an information that a public salon is very, very close to me, who I normally used to go and my hair. The man now, uh, is using LPG to power his generator. No smoke, no unnecessary uh, noise. The generator is calm, and he told me that he can use just a of of uh, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, LPG Gas. to power his generator for at least two weeks. Mm. Look at the kind of cost he's serving on the economy. Mm. Okay. The efficient in the environment is no longer there. Okay, okay, we have, we, have, we have like we have like one, one minute now. We have like one minute now. Please just be very brief with this one. Um, one minute cannot be enough to no, no, take care of some of the issues. We need to yes, I know. That's why we have to reschedule another time. But this one, I need you to answer this one. Uh, the question is that um, now that uh, all these things are happening and they say they are giving licenses to people, independent marketers to uh, import fuel, how far so far? How, how seamless is the process? How easy is the process uh, for all of you 
and how many of you are engaged in that. We heard that only six licenses were given. We didn't hear the names of the five others. We only heard of Dangote. We don't know what the five others are. Maybe the news is out there. I didn't see it. So how far so far uh, in terms of being able to get licenses for your members to do the importation of fuel or PMS? Well, you know that uh, as the mission, the body of the business is in relation. LNPCM uh, is the sole importer of the petroleum product in this country. And uh, when Mr. President made that statement, it was a very solid one. So uh, I will have to run back to uh, the books. So they want to see what we can do with the independent market as well. Put on. As I'm telling you, as I'm talking to you now, uh, I'm also discussing with some companies in this team and uh, Texas and uh, some companies in Syria this year. And some of us in a chance uh, uh, from uh, China who are also interested in the world to partner with independent managers to bring in China. So uh, as, uh, as, 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 as it is now, this uh, policy has driven us to be able to work on. And you also know that the independent market uh, constitutes 90% of the sale at mm -hmm. And we are the most major obstacle in terms of petroleum product and consumption. Okay. So we also want to import our own petroleum product. Okay. And we also want the matter. And we have written to NDPR for our license. And we want to come with our partnership okay. and the uh, discussions that are ongoing. We are also trying to also bring in the uh, Muslari finance. So okay. these are the issues, these are the things that are in the front corner of uh, the presence of independent petroleum petro market who right. has uh, also that we need to be able to discuss with some of our foreign investors and I think uh, it was a positive meeting uh, when I stood in Texas. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. We'll still be uh, in touch with you to get updates as uh, the days go by. For now, we'd like to thank you so much, Chief Ukadike Chinedu, for uh, coming on the program this morning. Thank you, Ukadike. Okay, we've been talking with Chief Ukadike uh, Chinedu, Ipman National Public, uh, Public Relations Officer. And uh, this is where we wrap up for, for today. But before we go, this is the quote for today. Uh, science and technology revolutionize our lives, but memory, tradition, and myth frame our response. That is by, according to uh, Arthur Schlesinger. And that is how it's going to be on the show this morning. Let's do it again tomorrow. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. On behalf of the entire team saying, have a wonderful day.